So uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded. Um, I, we post them on YouTube for people who can't be here. So um, if that's a concern for everyone, uh, please let me know. Uh, the agenda is pretty straightforward. It's kind of our standard. Um, we don't need to do introductions since, uh, since there's nobody new here. Uh, board farm status. Um, I had committed a, uh, a change to our Ansible scripts to uh, reboot the Raspberry Pis every day. Um, previously, they had not been re re rebooting, and occasionally we would, after a few days, the network connections would start to become very weird. That's the best way I can describe it. The, the results would get uh, for, from tests would become um, inconsistent at best. Um, so they're now rebooting. Um, as far as I can tell, they seem to be working. Uh, Hauke also was uh, very helpful and turned on. Um, there's a, a, a feature in, um, in Jenkins for uh, processing JUnit tests. And the output of our tests are the same as JUnit tests. So it actually works the same. Um, so when the test fails, it can get processed properly. So it's kind of an extra little uh, little way we can see how how the tests are doing. Um, additionally, we have um, I, I know that um, Matthew McClintock has posted some more information and some more examples of how we can use the uh, Kibana. Excuse me. Um, I haven't really looked into that too much, but I mean, if has anybody else looked at the at the Cabana results, they seem it seems kind of cool. You can actually see, you know, how the results are changing over time and stuff like that. So, well, I I saw what uh, QCA had set up for Cabana, and it was way better. <laughs> In other words, uh, they compiled it into like. There was the dashboard was all graphics, and you could see all the different boards that were being tested and the different locations, and uh, then click on any sort of anything you clicked on on the graphical dashboard would drill down into the details for that particular thing you clicked on. Um, so I think it has a little ways to go before it's super user friendly, but obviously it's pulling the data, which is good. Yes. I think uh, y you might between Matthew and Mike Anderson. Mike, Mike, is Mike on the call? I don't uh, think he is. Don't see him. Um, you know, I don't know which of the two did more of the Cabana stuff, but uh, if we can get a hold of Mike Anderson, we just mm. ask him to make it look prettier. We will do that. It is not, it, it is not the most user friendly right now, but uh, obviously uh, Matt's doing it in his free time. So we certainly appreciate what he's done so far. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk to him about that. Um, I also asked Matt to give us some some ideas on potential projects that he could work on, um, potentially on a, in a consulting role, just to kind of, I, I, I don't know budget, but uh, just kind of see what are things he could work on. Because um, while I can do some of the, mate, a lot of the maintenance and, you know, adding boards, the, the big coding stuff, I, I don't really have the time to do. So, and I can help with that, but I, he's, he knows it better than yeah. I do anyway. I, so. Yeah, I think having him set up uh, virtual machines so that you can, you know, be ready to scale. I mean, yes. even if he just sets up one um, laptop server type thing with virtual machines, then it's much easier to replicate that. But if he sets up one, that will make it a lot easier to continue to scale. I agree. <clears throat> so I think that would be... Uh, um. Hopefully we can uh, we can get a, a proposal some proposals from him and then uh, we'll see, figure out budget. I I'm, again I'm not the one who decides that, but it, I think it'd be I think it'd be very useful. Um, anything else on board farm that anyone has? Right, no, Eric. No, okay. Well, that happens. Um, all right. Um. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, funding open WRT projects. Um, we have um, the signatures and uh, signed agreements from Nils and uh, August, and they are going to work on their respective uh, projects for um, 
I, uh, it's the turning on and off network connections based on a schedule and turning on and off Wi-Fi based on a schedule, if I remember correctly. Um, so they are going to be moving forward and, and, and doing that. So I'm looking forward to seeing the results and, and things like that. Uh, the TR069 update, uh, Luca and Felix met last week. They've agreed on how they want to split up the work, um, and they will be sending proposals. Um, I, uh, Luca, they didn't say when they would be doing them. I would like, I hope they get them in this week, um, and then we can pass them along to uh, Art, uh, Kathy, and, uh, and David and, and get them approved. Um, but it, the way they described it, it seemed logical the way they were going to split it up. So um, that's uh, that's the update there. Uh, anything else we want to talk about related to funding open WRT projects? All right. Um, the uh, regulatory update. I sent out the um, the email to uh, the OpenWRT list and the FCC list to um, <clears throat> to discuss uh, to you know encourage people to send in their uh, their comments to the FCC regarding regarding uh, this topic um, of you know regulating Wi-Fi and potential technical solutions that you know meet requirements and the pros and cons of various technical solutions. Um, I really don't know how people are going to respond to it, but um, that has been sent out. There were some questions and I answered them. So I don't, I, I'm like, Art, you, you haven't heard anything more from the FCC, have you? No, they're still uh, looking at my proposal to get a conference call together with yeah. uh, Felix and Emory and others. Yep. Okay. I figured. All right. So that's the update there. Um, Open WRT Summit, we had a meeting yesterday with the committee. Um, we agreed that the RFP would be sent out today. Um, and so uh, we are going to, once I um, have that ready, um, I was waiting mainly to get the website up. And in like the last 10 minutes, we now have a website for the Open WRT Summit at openwrtsummit.org, which if we can't, we'd like, we can actually see. That's what it looks like. I hope people can see that. Um, so it uh, it's it's pretty basic, but it you know gets the job done and and shows it um, in a way that is a uh, it's a little nicer than a wiki. Um, so uh, we're going to have to send out the RFP and and the due date was it says on the site is uh, the twenty sixth. That's wrong. That's the 19th. It's supposed to be. I have to change that. Um, yes. Let me clarify. 19th. Yes. We we set it to the 19th with the chance that we might uh, delay to the 26th. So I have to update that. Um. So yeah, that's that's kind of the process. We're going to have to have make sure that everybody uh, you know, gets this out to everybody that um, might be interested. We're going to send out a um we're going to post on the purple purple works um we're going to uh tweet about it and um i know kathy said she was going to post something in the arduino blog um and uh paul was going to get stuff out to the creator so uh i think we're i think we're doing good but um we'll just have to make sure we get it out to everybody possible who uh, might want to submit a proposal So I think that's the update there. Anything else that we that we should discuss related to Summit that uh, wasn't discussed? Uh, I mean, one thing we had talked way long ago, and I now that I'm looking at the web page, openwrtsummit.org, I'm reminded of, you know, Summit sponsors Purple. Did we want to try to get anybody else to help sponsor? Because if so, maybe we should just put a note on the page somewhere or or somewhere on there, like if you want to help sponsor. In, in I, the long run, that would be a good thing to have to allow I, multiple sponsors. Yeah, I would agree. Um, 
sure. I mean, I don't I don't know what exactly the process and and what that would be and and how that would work, but sure. I mean, I'm generally I don't think I don't I think that's something we would um, not mind. Absolutely. So so click here and help sponsor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Definitely. just maybe a note right under Summit Sponsors, uh, uh, you know, interested in sponsoring, and it just goes to an email. That'd be fine. Yeah, sure, we can do that. Great and then, of course, that. we have to figure out what would happen once. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's the other thing, yes. <laughs> what would happen once yeah. they, uh, after they process, send the email. Because definitely um, some some companies, you know, CZ Nick behind tourists and stuff like that, they they might want to help sponsor. Oh, definitely, I'm sure. Definitely. We get, we'll, we'll add the link and then if we, I guess once we get, uh, once we get some replies, we can figure out what to do with that. Well, usually what happens is, you know, they'll sponsor the morning coffee break, the lunch, mm -hmm. the, the social evening social. I mean, you can start breaking things down and then acknowledging the sponsor at that time or as part of that, or they could create a stuff bag, you know, sh swag. Mm -hmm whatever yep definitely i think i think at this point we're not expecting a a flood of of sponsor <laughs> requests so we can probably just deal with it manually i would tend to agree yeah I, I don't think we're going to also the uh registration is open um on the linux foundation website so you can register is and it also is as before, last year if you signed up for elce or open iot you can have it added as a as a add-on so all right i think that's everything related to the summit um just a reminder the carrier carrier interest group meeting is august 23rd that's still a while but um that's uh that's out there um anything else we want to bring up all right well i guess we can we can uh make it a quick meeting then i'll uh see everyone next week and 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 uh Keep your keep your eyes peeled for the RFP later today. Great. Thanks, awesome. Eric. Thanks, Eric. Take care. Yep, you too. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.